Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Martha's Place 20th Anniversary Fundraiser. It's virtual this year, and we trust that you will come and be a part and enjoy. It's good to see you, everybody. Uh, this is our 20th year of operating Martha's Place. Mrs. Harris and, and I have a couple of co-founders along with her husband, Elder C.W. Harris, and when we got this all started those years ago, um, you know, we, we didn't realize that things would grow and flourish the way that they have. So many of you have supported us and made this possible. And normally we would be together outside across the street under a tent in our garden. But of course, we're trying to be safe with the realities of this year. So we thank all of you that are joining us, watching us remotely. We're going to have a little fun tonight, show you some of the, uh, the memories, the staff, the people, the trivia. And uh, we hope you have a good time with us. Remember, there may be some technical difficulties, but bear with us. We know that you'll enjoy yourself. Thank you, everyone. And we're going to start by showing you our video about the work that Martha's Place does here on Pennsylvania Avenue for West Baltimore. I asked the question, what could I do as a servant leader to support the community? And a woman stood up and said, build a place for women who are suffering with drugs. There are a lot of places for men, but there are not enough places for women. And so that's what we did. We did what the community asked us to do. We serve here because there's so much suffering in this community. Back in 2000, when Martha's Place um, began, the vision was to provide a place for women overcoming their uh, addictions and homelessness, especially from our community of Sandtown, Winchester. One of the ideas that Elder Harris came up with for Martha's Place is that if a woman can recover here in the city, then they could stay clean anywhere. And so the purpose was to provide this uh, safe haven, although it was in the midst of the city, and although it was in the midst of a lot of trafficking going on, Martha's Place became a safe haven for those women that felt that they needed the help and that we were here to help them. The counselor that I was assigned to asked me if I was ready to go home after treatment and I said no, I didn't think 28 days was quite enough treatment for me. And so he explained to me about Martha's Place and it sounded like something that I would have been I would be interested in because of the structural component that Martha's Place had. I wanted to be whole again. I wanted to be free of drug addiction. Martha's Place offers long-term housing for women in recovery along with supportive services. Monthly addictions counseling meetings, money management, case management services. They might have um, some other kind of barriers or challenges that they are working to overcome like rebuilding relationships, seeking employment, um, dealing with some kind of grief um, issue for which maybe they might need to be connected and linked with therapeutic services. Uh, so case management takes into all those things uh, and provides resources for women um, depending on their need. Martha's Place is located on Pennsylvania Avenue right at the intersection of Pressman Street. It's a wonderful uh, intersection as over the years there's been a lot of change from blighted vacated buildings to um, beautiful homes where our ladies get to reside and I get to work. It has made me the person that I am today and it has made me want to give back which was given to me so freely and I feel very 
relieved and I feel so good about myself today. I just love what it's done to me mentally, spiritually, and physically. Um, to date, since the inception of the program, there have been nearly 500 women that have come through the doors and been served by our program. The ladies in our program come from all over. Mainly they come from the city, Baltimore itself, some in fact from West Baltimore. To be eligible for our program, women have to meet certain uh, requirements. One of the main requirements that they have to meet is successful completion of at least a six-month transitional program. They are required to have an income, either by employment or perhaps SSI or SSDI. Women in the program sign annual leases, which are renewable on an annual basis, and they can stay as long as they want to or need to. Women come to our program seeking structure. They know when they leave transitional that they're not ready to return to their home environments and they have the insight enough to know where they are in their recovery process to seek a program like Martha's Place that provides that kind of structure. Martha's Place gave me the ability to become the person that I used to be the person that could hold a job, the person that could be responsible, be reliable. It gave me that structure of that nine to five drive to participate in community events and activities and to basically just meet life on life's terms. The goal of Martha's Place is to help women sustain recovery from addiction and to learn the tools and skills needed to be successful. We really want them to outgrow their need for us and we're here to prepare them in any way possible. I know where I would be. I'd probably still be using if not dead. So Martha's Place saved my life. And I've been there um, as a staff person long enough to see the transformation take place in other women's lives. So I would say that Martha's Place saved lives. And I'm very proud to tell anyone that I am an alumni of Martha's Place. Everyone, we hope you enjoyed that video, that look at Martha's Place and the work that we're doing. That was actually filmed in 2017, so we've had some updates since then, some wonderful new staff that are with us, and we'd like to spend a couple minutes introducing them to you. We're going to do that in a moment, but first, we want to make this fun, and we've got a little bit of trivia for you. So we're going to give you some questions now, and you can write them down, and we'll come back at the end of our program and see who all knows the right answers. All right, question number one. What was the address of our first Martha's Place building? Question number two. What year did construction begin at that location? Question number three. How many residential buildings does Martha's Place have for our ladies? Question number four. Who is the founding director of Martha's Place? Question number five. How many women have we served since we first opened the program? Question number six. What are the names of our different buildings? Question number seven. Why do we still operate Martha's Place? And last question number eight. How have our Martha's Place ladies impacted our intersection and our community? If you know the answers to any of these, write them down and we'll be back for the answers a little bit later on. Now meet our staff. Hello everyone, I'm Corey Jackson. I just recently joined the team here at Martha's Place as the interim program director here. Um, after joining or volunteering a year ago here at Martha's Place, I fell in love with the atmosphere. The energy was right. The, the residence was warm and welcoming. And so I wanted to uh, volunteer a little bit more and do a little bit more research on office space. Well, since joining, my work has included K-12 
case management, money management, referrals for, for resources, and also anything else that, the, that, that our residents need to assist them in uh, self-care and getting to the next level of being independent. Um, and I believe at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, self-care. You know, our, our residents are understanding and learning that part, that process, and it, it shows. It shows. I'm Grace. I'm the peer support coordinator at Martha's Place. I originally started here in summer of 2019 as an intern, um, but I guess I did such a good job that they had to hire me and keep me on. Um, I was lucky enough to become a staff member after my internship. Um, and I think just the best part of working at Martha's Place is getting to see a side of not just people recovering from addiction but just like a side of humanity that oftentimes we forget exists and that we forget to celebrate um people who make it this far in their recovery are almost never talked about almost never celebrated and it's really wonderful and inspiring to be around all these women who have made it so far and are continuing to better themselves and their lives and i'm just really grateful that i have a part in that To Martha's place was uh, my drinking had gotten totally out of hand. Um, I did a tailspin uh, and a nosedive after a 22-year marriage. Um, I uh, was homeless, and that was my bottom. I went to uh, Gaudenzia in their six-month program. I read up on Martha's place, and I decided Martha's place was where I wanted to be. So I came here and uh, I've been here since 2013 and um, I'm happy. Well for me, I've been through quite a few uh, recovery places and nothing worked. I would be okay for like a month or two months and my drug of choice was alcohol and I just wasn't ready to give it up until I hit my bottom when I had I always had a good job I always had a place to go but this time I burnt so many bridges I had no place else to go so that's when I went to Gardenzia and graduated from there six months and my care coordinator said I had two places to go to and one of them was Martha's place and if I didn't get to Martha's place then they were going to put me in a cold blue shelter but Martha's place accepted me I've been growing a lot in my recovery. I find myself finding out more about myself daily. Um, so I don't know, since COVID, people ask me how am I doing, how am I feeling, or how is it going? It's been an interesting, interesting ride. Um, it's been very challenging. But being here at Martha's Place, um, and they had like no... Um, limit on how long we can stay. It's a long-term transitional treatment for women, which allows me and affords me to be able to focus on like one goal at a time and just uh, break them down of uh, a lot of the things that I'm trying to do in the future, the near future and some far away. Um, break them down and compartmentalize and actually get things done successfully. And as far as something that I would lead with my sisters that are coming behind me in this program this year makes 15 years that I've been connected and the first thing I would say is stick and stay and the second thing I would say is to stay stay connected stay connected to the community stay connected to your family and your peers that are here with you and con stay connected to the alumni get rooted and grounded in your spiritual principles and always remember that this whole program is it's a sacred place.
it's not just for recovery you know not just that you stop using drugs but it's to restore you so I say come and be restored everyone we hope that you enjoyed hearing from our ladies directly they are our motivation with their lives their stories their perseverance their triumph uh, and seeing the impact that Martha's Place has on them and that they in turn have on our community. And we ask at this time that if you are able, we know it's a difficult year uh, for many financially, but if you are able, please consider supporting our work with a donation to help us to continue doing this work. It has really been um, heartwarming that some of our alumni may not have had much but they always talk about sowing a seed, giving back. And so whether it was financial, whether it was through volunteering, whether it was through peer support, whether it was through sharing their testimonies, being at Martha's Place, what it was like, um, what they've learned since they graduated or left the program. And so we invite you to join us Nothing little um, is too small, and no amount is too great. Your support, always, since we began, has been meaningful to all of us. You can make donations online at marthasplace.org. You can also send in by check to our mailing address, which is Martha's Place. P.O. Box 12764, Baltimore, Maryland, 21217. And we thank you for your support. And now we're going to close out with a little bit of a return to our trivia questions. We know we presented them earlier. We'll recap them here and see if you write down at home uh, how many you got. And uh, maybe we do some kind of like prize when, uh, <laughs> when the pandemic ends and we can have you back on site and take you out for a meal. So. The first one, Mrs. Harris. Number one, what was the address of our first Martha's Place building? The first address was 1928 Pennsylvania Avenue. In this photo here, that is the building, and it's right across the street on Pennsylvania Avenue at Pressman Street. Number two, what year did construction begin on this location? All right, the answer is... 1996. Mm -hmm. We did just one day a week. One day a week. And then in 1999, we were able to raise enough funds to do full time until we then completed the construction. Okay. Number three, how many residential buildings does Marcus Place have for our ladies? We currently have four buildings that are residential. Uh, one of them at 1928 has six ladies. The others across the street on Pressman Street have three ladies each. And then here we are in our office building where we have counseling sessions, case management, money management, all kinds of support. Okay, number four. Why don't you ask that question? <laughs> who, who was the founding director of Martha's Place. I knew this one. I knew this one. <laughs> oh, it was her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mrs. Harris was the founding director of Martha's Place and served in that role our first many years. Graciously has come back at different points in term and, uh, you know, it's an example of the love and support that all of our current staff have and many over the years to keep this work going. All right, number five. How many women have we served since Martha's Place first opened the program? And the answer is that over the years since we began, between our transitional program initially and then our long-term program, we have served almost 500 ladies with recovery services and residential housing. All right, number six, what are the names of our different buildings? The answer is 1928, is Martha's Place. At 
590. 590 is Winchester House. Mm -hmm. 586 Pressman Street. 586 is, oh, 586 is Roberta's house. 588. Oh, okay. Sorry. 588 <laughs> is Gail's house. And 586. 586 is Roberta's house. And those names come from volunteers that have been dear to us uh, over the years, partners, and Martha's place in the original Martha's Place building was named after Elder C.W. Harris's mother. All right, next question. Why do we stand operate Martha's Place? Well, the reason is because the need is still there. Uh, our ladies are working towards their recovery, their healing. A lot of our ladies, as you heard in some of their testimonies, have faced it's not just the addiction, it's not just the drug use, but so often it has been severe trauma that leads to that turning to substance as a coping mechanism. And so we continue to provide that support for them, that healing. And it's relevant now and it's serving our community and our ladies throughout Baltimore. And number eight, Mrs. Harris. How have our Martha's Place ladies impacted our intersection and community? Yeah, that's been something that while we talk about the work that Martha's Place does, we really look at how they have been critical for our organization at Intersection of Change and Martha's Place, our Jubilee Arts program, our Strength to Love 2 program. All this work at Intersection of Pennsylvania Avenue and Pressman Street it's not just our staff that are here, but our ladies that are the permanent residents at our intersection that fight for our corners, that are the eyes on the street, and have made a big difference. So, it's a little trivia. Thank you again for everything. Those that started out with us back in 1996, up to those that are with us now, 2020. We appreciate you, we love you, we know you hold us dear. Continue to do so, even as we continue in this labor of love. Thank you, everyone. And if you're interested, stay tuned for a little post-session with some questions and answers. We'd love to hear from you, and have a good night. Good night.